Turning back to our top story, the country is bracing for a verdict in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Closing arguments begin today in the trial of the former police officer accused of killing George Floyd. The prosecution and defense will have one final opportunity to make their cases before the jury decides. So Vinu Varghese is with us now to provide some legal insight. He's a criminal defense attorney and a former prosecutor. So Vinu, thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Let us talk about closing arguments, what they are, why they are so critical for both sides. Um, what are they aiming to do today? For the prosecution, they are aiming to overwhelm, take this to and close this, put the final nails in the coffin of, of Derek Chauvin. That's what they're trying to do. I can tell you that for pro closing arguments rarely sway people one way or another. By this point, jurors have made up their mind. It's rare that jurors are going to look at this and be swayed by arguments on either side. So the question then becomes, where have they laid their hat? It's sort of like looking at it from a political perspective, right? No matter how much you, you throw information you throw at people, they've often made up their mind, whether it's Trump, whether it's the effect of lockdowns on this country, jurors have made up their mind. Now, for the defense, what they have done, it, it could be their final shot, though, because this is a way where the, net, the defense attorney can tie in all the different things that he wants to tie in. Now, when you're, if you are an attorney who knows what he's doing, you argue backwards. So then you tailor your case to argue what you're going to say in your closing arguments, meaning like, what you plan to say in closing arguments is what you've done all the way through. And, to, and here, while I've been critical of Nelson and some of the things and, and him not objecting, he's actually laid out a roadmap for his case. And he's argued that drugs played a substantial factor in this death. So in the end, while closing arguments you know, rarely sway jurors one way or another, it may be Nelson and Derek Chauvin's only shot to walk away from this. Mm -hmm. So we know the basic arguments that we've been hearing from both sides. Um, Derek Chauvin put, placed his knee on George Floyd's neck. That cut off his oxygen. As a result, he's responsible for his death versus, well, there were other health factors, other things happening, not just with about the health of George Floyd, but also uh, the people on the street were distracting. There were other reasons that could, could have contributed to George Floyd's death. Um, now, the jury is going to have to sit. The jury is looking at three possible charges that Derek Chauvin is facing. It's um, second degree murder, third degree murder, and third degree manslaughter. What are some of the things that the jury will have to consider when, when looking at the list of charges they're trying to decide whether or not he's guilty of? Well, the jury is going to be instructed of specific elements on each of these, on each of these crimes. I wrote an op-ed last year that was published online at law.com and New York and printed in the New York Law Journal that, that said, that argued that Chauvin, the only viable charge is manslaughter. The two murder charges, in my, in my view, are out of bounds. They are, they are what we call charge stacking. But the prosecution introduced these charges, knowing that they don't have the legal basis for these charges, to ensure a conviction on at least the manslaughter. I think manslaughter is a viable charge that Chauvin ignored or to have conscious disregard for the risk of death when George Floyd was saying, I can't breathe, and spectators are saying, he's out, man, or he's, he's not moving. You can make, I think that's a good, strong argument for the defense, but to, to, to go beyond that, I think, is, is more than what the prosecution should have, been, should have done or should have allowed to have happened. But in reality, it's going to be very hard for these jurors to go home and deal with what's, they're going to be afraid of what's going outside the, the courtroom with the, with the recent mm. shooting and a year of this, more than a year of this stuff. So do they have the courage, if they find reasonable doubt in these charges, in, in what's been presented to them, could they acquit? I'm not sure. In fact, if you want to look really closely, the, the prosecution's, what a lot of commentators have said was a prosecution star witness, Dr. Toman, the pulmonologist who, who, who said that, um, you know, who, who, who hammered it home for the prosecution, also introduced reasonable doubt. He said there were other factors, such as being in the prone position, such as having handcuffs on. But when you look at the video, you have two other officers who's, who's, who's also, were also holding George Floyd down. 
And that was minimized during this trial, partly because there's an upcoming trial with these guys. But Nelson, defense attorney, can argue today that with all these factors, you cannot say that it was Derek Chauvin, whether it's knee on back, uh, on his neck or his shoulder, was a substantial cause. And that's what he's going to be arguing, should be arguing today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to clarify, I said third degree manslaughter, second degree manslaughter. I saw the graphic, I misread my computer here. Um, so in this trial, uh, we saw a lot of video evidence. We also heard from a lot of experts. In your experience, what's likely to influence jurors more? All that, all that testimony from those experts or, man, that in really moving, upsetting video of George Floyd essentially losing his life? It really depends on the person. I mean, you have some people with science backgrounds on the jury. I think the prosecution overwhelmed the defense with the amount of experts. And, and you and I spoke last week about the cumulativeness of this of this testimony of, of the, that the prosecution piled on. And they shouldn't have been allowed to present so many witnesses because there's no way the defense can counter because they don't have the resources of the state of Minnesota. While the defense had a million dollars, that's not a lot of money for a case like this when the state is spending millions and millions of dollars to put, to put this case together, the hours, the experts. That's what the state was doing. So. In the end, the prosecution is going to be like, look, you heard from X, X, Y, Z, A, A through C in terms of experts, and you had one guy uh, on use of force for the defense, you had one guy on saying that there was, uh, that, you know, drugs played a part for the defense. I mean, that's a dangerous argument because that could lead to a, for technical reasons, could lead to a reversal on appeal. But that's, in essence, what they're going to be arguing. So as to who or as to whether they're going to be listening to this stuff, at this point, the jury may be numb to the video. I mean, if they've seen it so many times, they may be numb. And the, the testimony from the people that have testified may play a factor. And they may ask for readbacks of some of their testimony. Uh, Vinu, really quickly before we leave, because about all the legal people that we've spoken to, you're the only one that said that going along, you saw, ground, you saw grounds for an appeal. Um, now that the defense has rested completely, except for the closing arguments, do you still see grounds for an appeal? Yeah, there are numerous grounds for appeal throughout this case, one of which is the fact that this judge allowed this trial to proceed as is without the other defendants. I mean, this is this these people should have been tried together. Now he he cut it down. He 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 said that we could only have two alternates. There, if there's a mistrial here, it's because they didn't get a bigger room. They could have moved this to some other facility with a larger room to accommodate the trial of all four defendants and to accommodate additional jurors as alternates. Because I would hold my breath this morning to see if all of them show up. Now, even if all of them show up, they're going to be sequestered, and we'll see how long they can stay together and actually reach a verdict. All right, Vinu, always great talking to you. Thank you.